What's up, sweaties? That's right, it's a very special episode of Heroes 251. It's a combo special. We're gonna to talk today about the Spider-Verse. We're gonna talk about Suspiria, and we're also gonna talk about that Joker thing. That's right, it's Collider Nightmares. There's no way you can stop us from coming back at you, baby. It's Heroes Nightmares Reunion. Crossover, yeah, yeah. That's right, it's a reunion show! We've got Fandoms Clark Wolf Yay! back in the house. Yay! The host of Nightmares is joining us to do a special body horror, Heroes Horror, <laughs> Slabatron. We're swabbing the deck with blood. You can name it. We're going to talk about all the horror movies of 2018 that have come out, that are coming out. We're getting sweaty and bloody with Perry Nemirov is back. What's up, Perry? So happy to be here. I love this crew so much. Mark Riley's in the house. Oh, very happy to be here. This is nice. And this Clark is very Wolf, nice. It's so great to have you back. Thank you. I mean, I, unfortunately, we couldn't talk about that Halloween trailer because they're greedily holding it off for another 48 hours. We can't break Damn that code. You. But we've got pictures of it. I mean, there's so much stuff happening in horror. It's almost like we're like a bottle keg we're waiting to explode because we normally don't talk that much about the world of horror in in this realm either, either sci-fi fantasy horror and so we can really get into it really deep i did want to touch on some of the things that revolve superheroes spider-verse let's just talk about that right now it's not it's yeah. not really horror centric obviously it's not it's a family film uh but it, is, it does involve spiders and getting mutated and uh, <laughs> bitten by a spider and turning into a mutant creature he doesn't grow six legs and kill people like he's not like the fly <laughs> eating people so not in that realm, but did, did you guys get a chance to see the Spider-Verse trailer or, or even yeah. teaser? Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? Oh man, I loved it. I thought it was so fun. The energy was great. The I, And I also loved how you got so much emotion and personality out of just a trailer. Yeah. Um, I dug it. I, I'm so excited to see that. It, it's coming out around Christmas, yeah? Yeah, literally. December. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's going to be the thing that I'm most looking forward to this Christmas, I can tell you that. Yeah, you, this, this might be one of my favorite trailers of the year so far. I thought it was gorgeous looking the animation was shocking to me how great it was how yeah. they brought the comic book I love he's running and you see the the talk bubbles go by totally him. and then I love the mentor and they announced Jake Johnson as uh, older Peter Parker know, mentoring Miles. I'm like, give me that now. I want it now. It I was great. like, this is Batman Beyond only funny. That's yeah, exactly yeah. when I was watching this. I was like, wow, they really, and they were able to take so much of Miles Morales' storyline from the comic books, including Spider Gwen and all these like weird characters that you would never have expected to see. And all of a sudden, you just see it and it completely 100% works Yeah, because it's humorous, it's funny, the animation is exhilarating. I yep. mean, literally, uh, coming from a background in animation, I knew they were trying different techniques because uh, I heard about it. I was like, we've got different render techniques. We're really trying to work on it to make it stand out. And boy, does this stand out. There's flash frames that literally feel like they're, you're coming out of a comic book. There's amazing cinematography that you could only do in the 3D world or it would cost like $400 million in the real world. Like, we've got upside down cranes tracking. It's like, all of it would be 3D anyway. But th they're like, look, this is 3D 100%. Perry, you haven't seen the full trailer, well, but you saw the teaser. Well, I've seen a lot of stuff. Some stuff I'm not allowed to talk about right. just yet, but really all this footage is absolutely stunning. And this movie could be a pretty big game changer for Sony Pictures Animation because yeah. right now, I mean, what is their hot franchise? Castlevania. Ho Hotel Transylvania. Yeah, tra They're yeah, making tra a third one that's coming out this summer. But putting something like this in the game could put them on another level. Because when we think of those animation juggernauts, you bring up like Disney animation, right. Pixar, Illumination, not so much that company, right, but Smurfs, now not really. if this yeah. winds up taking <laughs> off, especially between animation, anything that's family friendly, and then on top of that, all the diehard Spider-Man fans out there, could be a big deal for them. Yeah, especially, I mean, I love the, the situation that they put Miles Morales in, they tell with the storyline with his dad, and they also the mentoring of, with Peter Parker, all the different villains, it just looks like a blast. So obviously we're all gonna be seeing Spider-Man Spider into the Spider-Verse, great trailer. Let's get into some horror. Let me start, let's start off with that, this really cool poster that John Olson gave us last night. Check this out, it's a, it's a Nightmares Heroes crossover poster <laughs> um, with, with all of our mugs and some <laughs> demon creature that might possibly We'd be killing us. You can find it online. We've retweeted it. It's on Instagram and all those things. Thanks a lot for John Olson. You can find him at, at Johnny Ozart on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks, Johnny. Um, let's get into the state of horror and talk about it. In cinema right now, um, starting off with this year, we had A Quiet Place, mm. which a lot of people have compared it to this year's Get Out. Um, it was a, a smash hit. It's critically praised. Sequel seems obvious. What are your thoughts about getting a sequel? Let's start with you, Perry. I am open to it as long as they go with another family. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't seen this, but 
I think the one of the coolest things about the idea and the potential of continuing on with A Quiet Place movies is the fact that it could be a completely different experience, whether you're talking about what a family did immediately after the inciting incident right. kind of happens, or years down the line, different countries, different cities in the States. It doesn't matter. The story can completely change, but hold on to what they established in the first film the second you take it to another family. Definitely. Don't stick with this family, though. Their story is done for me. I am very satisfied with what I got. So as long as they go that route, I, that route, I will be rooting for it. But you know, the other thing to consider is director. It sounds like something that they're they're going to want to push forward with ASAP. But John Krasinski is attached to something else, and in my mind, at least, A Quiet Place had John Krasinski all over it. Right. So I'd want him to stick with the franchise. But I don't know if it, his mind is elsewhere right now. So Krasinski's off on Mars somewhere. Hopefully, yeah. I'm going to go join him on Mars. I can't wait to see whatever. I love Mars movies. And seeing that he's going to be uh, helming that, that sounds cool. Clark, what do you think about a Cloverfield-y kind of series with Quiet That's Place? exactly what I was about to say, was the, the the rumor that had been circulated about how they were going to continue the Cloverfield franchise was showing us the invasion or whatever it was in the events of the first Cloverfield, but in different cities around the world. Right. Um, and so that's how you kind of expand the universe. Different places will have access to different information information and experiences, but still tell a different Cloverfield story. And um, and it's kind of exactly what you were saying, Perry. Like, I feel that Paramount, which is the same studio that has Cloverfield, could take that exact idea and apply it to something like A Quiet Place, where you're seeing how other families in other parts of the world, I mean, think about, think about locations near water. Think about city locations, urban right. locations. This was a very, like, American farm town or, you know, um, like a non city location. So I think you could really do a lot with the creatures and also do a very compelling and terrifying story uh, if you if you change the location. Mm -hmm. Sure. What do you think, Ryan? Uh, same. I mean, I echo all your sentiments. I don't want the family to return. I do want Krasinski to return. But based on some of the comments he said where he actually revealed where those things come from, I'm not going to spoil it. So I think I'm noticing a trend. If we get a second movie that's very successful, I could see it going the route of what the Purge series is doing, where we get a couple more sequels and then we go back and we get when they arrived, how they, sure. what happened to the world and everything. I'm all for it. I'm all for it if you take chances, if you, if you bring it, if, if Krasinski's not there, bring in another filmmaker that may, maybe will get us excited, um, cast some, some other actors. Like when Emily Blunt and Krasinski were announced and doing this, I was like, that's kind of cool that they're doing this, like what looks like just a very intimate horror movie. So follow that kind of line of thinking. I'm all in, I want to see it. Like eight is enough, but with quiet place. So <laughs> there you go. I'll like, take it. You kids better eat. <laughs> uh, we've had Annihilation, Winchester, Insidious, The Last Key, The Strangers, Pray at Night, Unsane, Truth or Dare. That's all coming out. That's happened already. Which of these films made your night? Which of those films that I listed were your favorite? Let's start with you, Clark. Well, I dug Annihilation. I dug Annihilation for the risks it took. Um, I, I like that it was it was a divisive movie. I like that it was. I know I make this joke all the time. This is for a very select group of people who remember Party Down references, but <laughs> uh, Martin Starr was always talking about his screenplay and how it was hard sci-fi. Oh, yeah. and, um, and so that's how I felt about Annihilation, but in a good way. Like, it's hard sci-fi. Yes. Um, but I really, really liked it. Alex Garland, to me, is a filmmaker who is um, somebody who I want to continue seeing his, not only his screenplays produced, but I want to see him behind the camera. Um, and uh, I just, again, once again, I love Love that a studio gave it a wide release or big release, put real money into it, into a movie that they knew was going to probably divide audiences. But I, I think that's awesome. So I want to give a shout out to that. How about you, Riley? I got to go with Annihilation as well. And one up, I love that movie. And it is hard sci-fi. And that's what I appreciated is that he's not holding your hand in this movie. He's like, and that, and again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it, it's like, that ending, he's like, yeah, you're on your own, take it. And I love it when film does that, and I know it divided audiences, but it, it gave me a lot more as far as a film going experience, as far as thinking, than any of these other movies, because unfortunately, some of these Winchester was just, 
Mm. Winchester should have been better. It should have been better. I I love the lore and I love, you know, I've been to the Winchester house um, and I wanted more from that. You know, the other ones were just, they, they didn't land with me. So Annihilation, hands down, all the way. What did you, you say A Quiet Place on that list? Because that's still no, one of my favorite movies of the year. All it's right. Not... Well, I'm just going to throw that out there. Okay. I want to give a baby shout out to Strangers Pray at Night because still one of my favorite scenes of the entire year is the pool scene. So if I could just focus on the pool scene, that would put Strangers in the conversation. I liked Annihilation, but I think I'd have to go with Unsane. I'm just fascinated by different storytelling techniques. And I think uh, Soderbergh used the iPhone to great effect. I know he probably had fancy lenses on the thing and everything, but I think he used it in justify the use of it really well. And that was just one of those experiences that made you feel like trapped and suffocated with Claire Foy's character. And I, and I don't watch The Crown, so I'm really happy to be on the Claire Foy, Foy train right now because she's so good in that. And Jay Farrow is so good in that. And I love the two of them together. So I think I'd have to go with that one of the bunch. Well, I'm going with Insidious. Th- just kidding. Nah. <laughs> hey. Annihilation. Yeah. Insidious was pretty good. <laughs> the last key? Yeah. yeah I, I, didn't, I, I didn't see it. So I can't really. Like, the, I thought the last, just, I'm not, the last key was yeah. much better than chapter three. Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to see it when it's available. Is it available on streaming? Yeah. 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 Probably, yeah. Probably about it just now. came out. I saw it on my. All right. Yeah. My I don't want to crack on it too much because mm-hmm. I didn't see it, but I was like, mm. um, yeah, Annihilation for me. I love Alex Garland's Ex Machina. And then now this is, he definitely is an incredible writer. I agree with everything everybody said. Let's move into something that Lee Winnell just did. It's called Upgrade. It's out oh. right now. And I got to say, this is one of the most incredible action horror science fiction films to come out in the last decade. Uh, this film hit me so hard. I literally I was emotionally moved when the credits... I like almost tears were streaming because I didn't expect what happened to happen. I mean, and literally if you've seen thousands and thousands of films, just like every one of us on the panel have seen, you've come to expect like, I know what's gonna happen or you kind of know where they're going and you really do not know where they're going unless you've read spoilers and you're gonna pretend because you don't know, you really don't. And every single one of us who was in the theater were literally bowled over and shocked in different ways. For myself, I returned to the 16 year old version of myself right after I saw The Terminator mm-hmm. in 1984. I was literally like, I just felt like I saw something brand new in science fiction, in horror that is like, wow, this is the next step into what, you know, It's it opens so many Many doors while also just like body slamming other doors that like should be closed. I feel like this is the right way to make a low budget action adventure science fiction horror film if you're gonna do it. And hats off to Lee Woodell and the entire team at Bloomhouse Tilt for making such an amazing film and putting everything into it. I know it didn't have a big release date. I know a lot of the people, the people who crun- do the number crunching, they were like, get ready for it to not be too well, do too good. Cause I talked to Lee Woodell that night and he was like, yeah, they're telling me. I was like, dude, word of mouth is gonna crush on this movie. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, dude, it's gonna make more money than any of these boneheads are saying, and it's gonna be a classic. It's an instant classic. That's how I feel about it. Have you all gotten a chance to see Upgrade yet? Mm-hmm. Oh, let's yeah. start with let's start with you, Clark. <laughs> okay. Well, what I would say is twofold. The first thing is um, this movie hinges on Logan Marshall Green's performance. Now, for most of us at this on this panel, we kn- we saw the invitation. We mm-hmm. we know him. Mm-hmm. We know him. We know what he's capable of. But I foresee a the guest style breakout, the way Dan Stevens broke out yes. uh, after. And and I know Dan Stevens had been working before, but I would argue that the guest was the thing that sort of put him on the cool radar, even though not a lot of people saw the guest, right? Right. But all the right people saw the guest (laughs) in terms of the people who are doing the casting. And and so I foresee this being Logan Marshall Green's uh, breakout because the movie doesn't work if he doesn't make it work. Not only physically, but he's acting and reacting to something that we cannot see. Yes. So so it has it all hinges on him. And then the second thing I want to say with respect to Lee is that um you know I I think it's really easy to forget how nobody world builds like Lee Wenell. Mm-hmm. Lee created Lee wrote the saw the first saw movie. Lee wrote the first insidious movie. Lee has written up now he's written other things as well, but these are all worlds and universes that once you're in them, it's like 
boom. Right. Now, granted, yes, there is a visual style. James Wan, you know, directing Saw and directing Insidious is almost the perfect combination. But this was Lee's follow up to Insidious Chapter Three, and this feels like his movie. Um, so I think that we can't give enough credit to how talented Lee is um, at at world building as a screenwriter. I'm glad you said that. In fact, this feels like such a confident film. I didn't see Insidious Three. I mean, I liked Insidious and Insidious Two, but I was like, that was enough for me to whatever they call it, the further whatever. I was like, I'm furthering myself away from that. <laughs> but you know what? This felt literally like a v incredibly confident hand at directing. I mean, everything, every shot mattered. Every single scene mattered in this. And that, so that's when you have a true writer director. They're, they're able to see their vision all the way through from the inception of it to the completion of it. And that's what I respect about this film. Everyone behind the camera, all the producers, everyone who helped make his vision come to life. You gotta, I mean, you have to see this movie. What do you think, Riley? I haven't seen it yet, okay. but I've seen all the trailers. And the first trailer, I can already tell Logan and Marshall Green is incredible in it because we were playing some of that that B-roll footage here when he figures out and it, they mm. showed that shocking scene where it's like do you want to go yes I've got and yeah. he comes up I was like what, what am I what you might watch right I'm in it was so great so I can't wait to see it I, I had some family stuff last weekend I'm going this weekend to see this movie because of everybody's your you just got me Schnepp. everything you said I'm like and I love the Terminator uh kind of uh, really has that saying. vibe to it yeah it has that vibe to it and then just no Lee one I mean I love all of his stuff that he's written you know the first saw movie insidious all that I'm in. And I, I feel wait. like, I mean, with I mean, with a reduced budget, I know they were working like within the five to seven million dollar range. There's so much practical effects work and camera work and in I there. Love that. And that's exactly that's what, what we need cinematography. Sometimes. That's what cinema is about, is about yeah. using your brain and making things work and creative challenges. I mean, even those sequences, Gesundheit, when you see like when you, the camera's tracking around, I asked him and he said, you know how we did that? We just locked a can locked an iPhone onto his body. It's literally using an iPhone. I mean, there's tricks Boom. and trades. Yeah, I mean, when you see the film, look for this, I mean, not look for like the techniques, enjoy the film for what it is. Perry, what do you think? I loved this movie. I would see it again this weekend. I can't wait to own it so I can watch it over and totally. over and over. And obviously I am a big fan of Lee's as well. And when it was first announced that he was doing the third Insidious movie, because I love the Insidious franchise too, I was thrilled. I was rooting so hardcore for him. And then I saw the movie and I think in, in like the past 10 years, that might be the most disappointing did. I've mm. been walking out of a movie. I just, I didn't like what they did with the mythology. I didn't like the immediate story we were dealing with. And I didn't really see any style to the movie overall. And I really wanted to see what Lee Winnell was capable of behind the lens. This is like the exact opposite end of the spectrum. You could just feel like the passion and the understanding for every single level of detail in this entire production, whether you're talking about the world building, the, st the, uh, the set design, directing his, uh, his actors, and mm -hmm. Logan Marshall Green. I'll just repeat it because I think it needs to be repeated. How is he not a household name right now? Because the right. physicality of that performance, yes, that makes the movie. So does his relationship with Steve. Them. I mean, that was one of the qualities I think that surprised me and excited me yes. more than anything was that like it was almost like like a buddy action comedy between the two of them and just watching that develop. And when you talk about the world building, it's working on so many different levels that you don't realize. It's not like he just throws that concept in the world and the details in your face. There's so many things that are happening around the characters that it's just business as usual for that period. Then there's the, oh my God, look at this new thing. And the way they work together and reveal new elements of each other, that to me is how you organically build this fascinating cinematic world. And that's that's one of the main reasons why I want more of this. Also, I wanted to do a shout out to whoever did the practical effects on this, because they're all practical effects, the CG violence and visceral Verhoeven gore is what I would call it. It's like, mm -hmm. it's fast, it's brutal, it's fun. I mean, it, that's all I can really say about it. It's like literally like if you are in, enjoy horror films or science fiction films and action films, this is the film for you. Speaking about horror movies, let's get into that horrific scene where everybody, the shock ending of Avengers 4, right guys? That was kind of a little bit of a horror movie, right? Where everybody, <laughs> half the yes. universe, sorry, spoilers, if you haven't seen Avengers Infinity War and you're living on planet Earth <laughs> and you're watching a show called Heroes, what the hell is wrong with you? Sorry. 
sorry. If you're yeah, listening to this in your car or something, I don't know what's wrong with you. You haven't seen Avengers of Infinity War, or you already know that half the universe is dusted. Well, now you do. Um, everybody dies. Half of everybody dies. The remaining people who are left, check it out. There's some, so, some, some visuals, some concept art for Avengers 4 mm. dropped online about a day or so. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. The, you saw Thanos' new armor, but the most intriguing thing was seeing all of the visuals of our heroes in their new incarnations. To me, the one that stuck out the most, not only just it was cool to see Brie Larson as Captain Marvel, I thought that was great. Not only was it cool to see Captain America in his like, kind of like comic book accurate, like little armor plated, yeah. whatever McNugget things that are on his chest or whatever. <laughs> but the thing to me that I thought was the greatest was Hulk. And you see he's wearing some, a suit and he looks slightly more intelligent. He looks a little bit reserved. He doesn't look like Brawl, like Screamo. I think they're going with the intelligent Hulk angle, which I think would be great because they were talking about how, oh, a Bruce Banner and the Hulk are gonna have like a story arc. You know, and with even if you want to give Thor Ragnarok a little of that, you know, story arc flavor, that's the beginning of it. Yeah. Then we got a little bit of him like fighting against himself in this own movie, like, no, not like not wanting to be the Hulk, like hiding. Maybe he got too much of a beat down from Thanos. We don't know what it is. What do you think about this? Some of this imagery, Clark? It's very cool. It's really cool. And that was one of the bigger questions, honestly, that I had when I walked out of Infinity War was we didn't really resolve what was going on with Hulk or Bruce. Right. Um, and so so obviously that was going to have to play a part in in, in the next film. So, um, and also, you know, look, I I love Mark Ruffalo and um, and I, I like his chemistry and dynamic with everybody else in all of these Avengers movies. And so the idea that perhaps we are going to actually focus on what he's doing and focus on his character and focus on Hulk or, or at least evolve it just a little more and maybe close the arc or maybe further the arc a little bit, I'm, I'm in. What do you think, Riley? Uh, the, he, my eyes went immediately to Hulk in that image because I'm like, he's wearing something. Yeah. What's going on with Hulk uh -huh. wearing something? And then when you're bringing up the idea of him being an intelligent Hulk, it made me think of, yeah, the, his story. And, um, you know, I, I think you could suppose that he might have the Hulk was scared of Thanos. And so he, he didn't want to come out. And, and while Ruffalo was trying to or Banner was trying to get the Hulk out, which is a nice little flip from him trying to keep him in. I love that angle. So to say to go with what you're saying, Clark, I would love to see that travel into Ruffalo's performance and how the dynamic would help with the team. I love that. And I just love everybody there together. And I'm like, when it when it Landed online, I'm like, one, two, three, four. Yep, that's uh, who was left at the end of the movie. This is cool. Yep. What well, but then we've got, of course, Captain Marvel and mm. then uh, Ant Man hanging out on the I side finally... there, which is nice to see. I'm Where's really Hawkeye? looking forward to Where's Wasp? To... Is Hawkeye in there? Hawkeye, yeah, Hawkeye's, Hawkeye's in there okay, too. Good, finally. The other thing I started to focus on was the background. I'm just wondering what the background means, where exactly that is. Right. Really, I, I do not envy the people in the promotional department at Marvel right now. I mean, one, just keeping clear of leaks like this, but how I, I really, one of my favorite mailbag questions we've gotten recently is how do you market certain movies now? And one, it is an incredibly nightmarish challenge to me, but also the creative challenge that comes with something like that could be really exciting and could really just amplify the emotional value of any promo material they release for any of those movies leading up to the release of Avengers 4. So I'm kind of curious just to see what they do with that. Don't even release a trailer. Don't yeah. even just uh, realize, I know yeah, this right. one, never. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even say, just keep it that's, Avengers that's, 4, that's and the, then a curtain drops as you're walking into the theater, like what it's called. Yeah, I like that's the my, best joke my, my Yule Log idea, where it's just, it's just dust blowing in the wind. Oh, and that's it. Not, just dust. Three hours it. of dust. <laughs> exactly. They could seriously do dust falling, like on the streets of New York, and then just title Avengers, whatever they're calling it, and then uh. pff, release date, and everybody, that thing will be three million views in like an hour. Well, I, I gotta say, this is one of the greatest cliffhangers, because we only live literally have to wait like 10 more months. Mm -hmm. like, it's like it. so Thank many of these cliffhangers that we've had was like, enjoy three years of yeah. pain and hardship. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> hey, you know what? Let's talk about things. Speaking of having to wait, things that are coming out for the rest of this year. So mm -hmm. everyone's talking about Hereditary. You've seen it twice, Clark. Let's yes. hear about like without too no, many no. spoilers because it is coming out, I believe this Friday. This, yeah, yeah. This I Friday. can't wait to hear. I, I want to see it just because I want to have my own opinion on it. What's your opinion? <laughs> All right. So here's, here's my non-spoilery opinion. I can't tell if audiences are going to hate this movie <laughs> or think it is awesome. Um, one thing this movie is not 
is fun. <laughs> this is not a fun movie. So be ready. It's also a long movie. Mm. It's over two hours long. Okay. Wow. It is a real drama. It is grim. Mm. <laughs> Tony Collette is amazing. And it is a very well made and finely crafted movie. Mm. So that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> all right. If you know, I mean, the thing, and we were talking about this before we started rolling, but like, I feel like the part of the reason why I think that that I can't tell if audiences are gonna love it or hate it is because our horror movies that have been really popular and breaking through over these last handful of years, the Conjuring films, it, it fall, or I'm sorry, um, uh, a Quiet Place, mm. um, they are fun. And uh, even when they are scary, and so, and even when they have dark emotion right. involved, this movie is not that. Is, so, meaning it's not fun, even when is there's. Is this like on the lines of Mother? Does it fall into no, that no, category no, 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 of no, no. not fun, or is this no, like no, no. Uh, Mother? Mother, Mother is is. Um, so uh, this is not a knock, but it, it's it's all over the place. It's very abstract. Sure. This is a real story with okay. the three act structure. It's it's not Good. it's not one of those abstract like. A, That's what I wanted a to hear. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, no, no, it's not like that. But okay. all I'm saying is that if we've been preconditioned to accept our horror, our theatrical horror, to be fun in the way of The Conjuring and It and it, um, uh, A Quiet Place. Or Get Out, even, yeah. Yeah, or Get Out. Th this this is not that. So this is not, so get ready for some grim, disturbing, yep. uh, like sweating for the wrong reasons. Yep. All right, well, I'm in. I'm still in, because I, I like, you, you seeing it twice, it makes me like, look, I was going to see it, and I want to see it more. What do you think, Rob? Yeah, er everything you said, I love it. Like, it's your non-spoiler review, and I'm like, okay, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, I'm going. I want to <laughs> see it, because I need to, it, just like you said, Schnapp, I need to make up my own mind, and the fact that I love what you said off camera. We don't have to get into that about... It's just making up your mind uh, of a movie, and that's what movies are supposed to do. I right. love that when you go and you have to see it yourself to make up your own mind. Everything lo looks amazing. I love the word that came out of was it Sundance that it, yeah. It, yeah so and that Tony Collette. Yeah, she's amazing. I've heard Oscar whispered yes. with she's her. She's always great. I mean, she's a great. She's actress. great in everything, yeah. and I yeah. So I'm I'm gonna see this. All right. So no big deal. Perry, did you see Hereditary? I have not seen okay. it. I'm going tomorrow night. I hope it's with a packed house because I am very curious based on what I. I've heard so far, and Clark, what you had put so eloquently just now, what the response is, because the way I read that kind of assessment is, because we, we were talking about it before, my mind immediately goes to CinemaScore also, because you guys know I'm obsessed with box office mm -hmm. uh, numbers, and... You know, when you walk out of a, the cinema, the way cinema score works is it, it's exit polling. And if you didn't have that fun experience, you might be inclined to not give it a great letter score when you walk out. And, you know, I know some people are like, oh, I'm not going to let cinema score tell me what I think. I, no, that's not what the purpose of it is. But it's supposed to give you an early sense of right. what the buzz might be. Taking and the temperature, yeah. That, that could be a concern. If some people out there find it too off-putting, word will not spread no matter what the quality of the movie is, but for me, myself, and I, I cannot wait to see this. I've signed up for so many screenings, and for one reason or another, I can't make it, and every single time that happened, I just got crushed more and more. <laughs> Finally, I have my ticket Thursday night. Right. All I want are all the nightmares. I, like, I want I want to be up at night with with something something more than just the, the reaction that one would have to a jump scare or a creepy visual. I want something really deep and dark to think well, about. Well, now you have to see it with all normal people. People. Too bad, All the Perry. Yeah. The, the last thing I'll say is, um, for if you're watching this, you probably like horror movies. You've probably watched a lot of them. You maybe pay attention to like trends. And and so A24 is the company that's releasing this movie. So A24 put out The Witch. Oh, A24 yeah. put out It Comes at Night. They're they're known for more, um, you know, cerebral, uh, tension based films, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is a movie. Hereditary is a movie that not. So, so sometimes people, when they watch those movies, they go, oh, you know, it's not scary because like nothing happens or like you don't see anything. Right. So <laughs> this is a movie where not only do we allude to and build the tension uh, for scares, you see stuff. Ooh. Mm. 
I can't wait. So that's well, what see, now, when <laughs> people tell me, both. when I hear that, I, I'm like running towards the theater when that's I hear those kinds of things. But you're right. Most people are like, if someone's like, oh, man, I just saw Hereditary, totally depressing, disturbing, and, and, and really made me not sleep well. Most people are like, I'm going to skip it. I'm like, where is the theater? <laughs> yeah. where, can I see it now? Um, you know what? We've got Let the Corpses Tan. That's coming out August 31st. Um, you know. That trailer looks really cool. I even, I, I've been doing this nowadays, like when I'm watching a trailer and I'm like, I'm seeing this movie, I stop, I just look away. Mm -hmm. And I let the, the, the hear the visuals for like the last 30 seconds, because movie trailers, if you watch them nowadays, they usually, the last 30 seconds, they're putting in all their big, what you would call set piece money shots, and they're in there. And so you're seeing the end of the film. Literally, yeah. when you go see the movie now, most trailers have ruined it for you. But that's just, it's because it's like, it's not quantum mechanics, but it's a bunch of people sitting in an office like, we've done the research, and it shows that if you're at this, you know, with the, with all the cuts, you need to put this, 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 and this to, you know, and it, I guess it works because it gets people in the seats, puts the butts in the seats, but I'm already going to see it. I don't need to be sold. Like, Upgrade, I saw that very first trailer, oh, yeah. and I refuse to watch any more <laughs> trailers or TV spots because I was like, I don't want to, I want to just... I feel like I had that feeling, like I'm gonna just enjoy this film because it felt fresh and original. I don't need, you don't need to sell me, I'm already sold, you have my money. Or if I get to see it free, that's even better. But look, I'm paying for it. I'm gonna go see it again multiple times now that I have movie pass. What's up, baby? So, um, or at least once a month. I don't know how it really works, I haven't used it yet. You can tell me how it works, everyone's complaining about it online. I don't know, but let the corpses tan. We saw the trailers. Let's start with you, Riley, what do you think? Yeah, it looks great, I, I, I think it looks great, and I don't know a lot about it, so, um, Based on just, it, you know, I was programming movie talk and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that people are talking about this. Watch the trailer and went, that's enough for me. This looks interesting. I'm, I'm in. I don't yeah. know. When is it coming out again? August 31st. There like, it is. Uh, Holly and I found out about it from Vincenzo Natali retweeting. It's so nice. anything that re Vincenzo's like, yeah. this looks cool. I'm like, dude's on it. What do you think, Perry? Piqued my interest. That trailer is definitely different, which yeah. is always going to catch my eye because, as, as we've discussed, often trailers like to build to the big climactic moments and scare audiences with something that they might suspect is just purely cr crowd pleasing. So to see some Something like this, yeah, given given what my lineup for especially summer 2018 looks like, which is just filled with, I guess, kind of franchises right. and, and big, highly anticipated releases that I've been looking forward to for, let's say, like a year plus, sure. I need something different in there, and that looks like it could fill that slot. Definitely. Well, you know what? The Conjuring 2 has spawned The Nun, and mm -hmm. that's coming out September 7th. Uh, you know, it's like uh, whenever I would see that nun, I'd be like, it looks like Marilyn Manson. And it still looks like Marilyn Manson. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I hope Marilyn Manson is getting a side check or something. They're like, look, dude, just don't even say anything. Here's like 10 grand or so, whatever. <laughs> what do you think about the trick? I mean, we all saw Conjuring 2. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought I still it's not as good as The Conjuring. The Conjuring is, I think, an, a yes. classic yeah. horror film. When we saw it, it was like, oh, my, I think I saw it in the theater three times. It was that effective. Mm -hmm. And I saw it recently again a month ago. And it's still... Mm -hmm shockingly horrifying. I mean, it really literally works on all levels. The uh, Conjuring 2, not as much. Um, it's still a good horror film. And they tried to, I felt like, oh, you're trying to throw all these characters. There was that like weird pumpkin head guy. You're like, remember the dog? <laughs> crooked turned man. man. What was it? It's yeah. a crooked, crooked man. man, right. Which, Which I wanted more than the nun. Yes. Where's my crooked man <laughs> yeah. movie? All yeah. of us, all of us, I remember we all saw him. We were like, where's our crooked man? We were all yeah. like calling it crooked man. I guess we called it wrong. Because the whoever wanted the nun, I guess they had the more power to be like, the nun. Yeah. Crooked man is buried somewhere. It's still a dog. Like, I'll transform soon. Who knows? The nun, are you excited about it, Clark? Well, the Nun to me is kind of like fetch. Like, stop trying to make the Nun happen. <laughs> oh, I, I love that reference. I, 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 so, and also, correct me if I'm wrong. Have we seen a trailer? No, we no. saw that tease. Well, we saw at that, Comic Con Comicon last yeah. year. It, we we had gone to a footage presentation for it, and then at the yeah. very end of that, they gave us like the first look at yeah. footage from the Nun, and it was. It yeah. was very, very small, next to nothing, not all that much happened. So it didn't right. really well, change my excitement level for the been film. Out. It hasn't I, come I, out yet. I think I might have seen a teaser, maybe a yeah. little baby teaser for The Nun that doesn't really show you anything, but just reminds you that it's happening. But my question is, it's June. 
Yeah, I know. Right. Where I, the hell is this movie? Mm-hmm. Like, and and so right. I'm wondering. And they've pushed the release date. I, I feel like the Nun was supposed to come out in earlier this it year. It was. They pushed it to September seventh. Yes. So so I'm I'm kind of like, what's going on now? Maybe they're going to um, do a push at Comic Con. Um, may, but but then again, WB has actually has Aquaman stuff to show. It has right. like real, you know, it has the DCEU stuff to show. So um, I'm I'm skeptical of this um i i agree i wanted a crooked man movie more um so uh, we'll see but yeah i do think it's bizarre that we're three months away yeah and there's no trailer straight to something video something, 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 something tells up. me that this is gonna get pushed right. i thought they originally switched the date because they were chasing the the it money purely but maybe they needed more time and maybe they're coming to that point where they realize they didn't have enough time and it's maybe gonna they'll get save it for again. january i don't it know it seems a, a like quick, the better bet it, now it could be a quick crash get a cash grab be like before halloween drops it'll be like the nun and just yeah. it yeah. shows up they get 10 million opening weekend and then it goes straight the, to video. The, this is a con Conjuring universe, though, so they're You're they're right. they're banking on You're it. Right. They're You're not, absolutely right. They're not going to put this. It doesn't. One. It shouldn't be a cash grab. It should be like, hey, well, let's release it properly. But you're absolutely right. There's no trailers. It's There's weird. no trailers. Yeah, we just and that tease. Now I was kind of looking. It's not really out there. Okay. So it's like no. kind of like a year. There wasn't all that much to it. There wasn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and the, the what we did see, I was just like. Me. All right. Well, let's Me. talk about this. The first purge. Uh, like I had a release date of July fourth. I don't think that's possible because that's next. Still, month. oh yeah, it's coming. Yeah, no, oh, oh, that's yeah, totally yeah, coming. Where are the trailers for the first? Trailers are out. Yeah, trailers yeah. are out there. They're, trailers, I'm asleep posters. at the wheel. All yeah. right. Well, since I didn't see the purge, the first purge trailer, and it's something I've been looking forward to for a long time, I must have happened, and I was just, like, just it just went, happened. Oh, that's right. It's like a buried, a buried mm-hmm. email somewhere. We're like, I did email you, and you're like, did you? And it's like lost somewhere. <laughs> that's the first purge trailer. I did not see it, but it's exactly what I wanted to see after that horrible purge three, which mm-hmm. was garbage. I was like, I'm done with the purge, and then I heard, I started hearing from some people who are involved in. No, you know, we are going to do a purge four. The idea is either we're going to do this. There was like a whole bunch of. Different different ideas, but it's going to go backwards. And yeah. I was like, all right, well, then if they go backwards, I'll be intrigued. And this is honestly the as far as backwards as you can possibly go. It's the first purge. What are your thoughts, Perry? I like the concept of the purge. I think that will always keep me invested in this franchise, no matter what happens or no matter what they plan, where I'm going to want to see what they do. But I was just grossly disappointed. I mean, it's it's almost like the, the insidious narrative where I loved a franchise and then the third installment was just devastating. I mean, yeah. I I was miserable same in here. that screening. It was like, let and me poop in your I mouth. I think we were no, at the I'm same good. screening no, I like, and I, I was like <laughs> angry after. Yeah, same here. I was like, thanks a lot for the two and a half hours of wasted time. This is garbage. Oh, um, yeah. There's a lot of poop jokes yeah. in the yeah. I, I, the, the thing I would say is that I'm I'm disappointed that we keep going back to a city or urban setting. To me, what's so interesting is that The Purge is all over the U.S. Right. I, I really, you know, I still like the first movie for what it is, but it takes place in the suburbs. The second movie takes place in downtown Los Angeles, right? Or even if it's not Los Angeles, it's right. the downtown, it's downtown of a, it's downtown of a city, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I kind of, I still still want my like rural purge movie or I want something that is not the same location every single time. I thought there was a chance that that's what yeah. this would be just because the idea of testing out the first yeah. purge, right. you would think they would want it seclude, like just in case this goes completely yeah, wrong, bonkers. we yeah. can just bury it and no one will know. And I mean, I guess the idea of Staten Island, at least it's it's contained, contained right. but, yeah. but still, I mean, it's right or next door to Manhattan. Purge. Everyone's I mean, gonna I'm see sure everything. I'm sure a prison purge would be exciting. Yeah, I mean, that was the, uh, the whole thing with the, the purge series for me has never landed. It, it just hasn't. I thought all the movies are fine by me. I didn't have the, the reaction you had with the third one. The right. third one was just more of the same, to be honest with you. I was always interested in the concept of how The Purge was created. And then we talked about it on Nightmares. We've talked mm-hmm. about the show. We've yeah. talked about what's going to happen. And we would all. I would always jump in there with you, Clark. I wanted something that we haven't seen. Yeah, what is it like in rural areas where there's one person in a cabin in the woods or yeah. something that you God can damn bring it, that some, be the fifth you movie. can bring That's some horror into it. And like, yeah. so killing is legal for tonight. Now you have 
a true horror kind right. of population concept. four thousand. The next day, population fifteen. Like, yeah, it's like literally. And I understand the idea that people don't like the first movie because they feel like they were sold a movie that they didn't get right because yeah. the middle is like just like a home invasion right, type right. of thriller. But spoiler alert for the first purge. If you haven't, thank you. Um, the the point I'm making is that what you find out is that it's their neighbors who are there to kill them. Mm -hmm. And so so that to me is what's compelling about this. It's the idea that the people you know that you think you can trust are going to take the advantage of this night. Th that, or expand it to families, expand it to small town politics. Like, I don't understand. There's and, so much story. And it's so cheap. Yeah. You can make this that's, movie for nothing. That's exactly, and like did the character studies that you can do exactly. with it, not just the next door neighbor it's a bit leaky like to do it from the point of view of somebody that is going to decide to kill that night like right. it was like what if riley decided to do the purge right. like well, they also introduced the idea of people coming in from overseas to participate in the, sure, in the yeah. purge which is a that's, great idea that's you have the deadliest mentality. game the most deadliest game kind of flavor in there where it's like hey, i'm gonna go hunt we're giving now. these guys way too many ideas yeah, for this know, right? all right you've got purge <laughs> five six and seven that's it we better get checks after that. <laughs> hey, Venom is also coming out. We're not going to give any ideas for the sequel to Venom because we haven't seen the first one yet. It comes out October 5th. It looks like a superhero horror film. It's got um, Logan Tom. Green's friend, the, the thicker one. Tom yeah, Hardy. that's right, Tom Hardy. <laughs> um, he's going to be the hero in this one. A lot of people always like to make jokes about Logan Green. It's like, hey, he's kind of like a poor man's Tom Hardy. It's like, well, no, anymore, he's man. no, now he's stepping into his own for sure. But we've got the real Tom Hardy sweating it out as Venom. And you know what? That last trailer really sold me. I know a lot of people are like, eh, crying about the teaser or whatever. I thought the teaser was great. I don't need to see Venom. Why? Because I'm going to see Venom. I'm going to see the movie. I don't, I don't even want, I didn't even want to see Venom. In in any of the trailers, but that's just me. I'm cool. I'm glad that they showed him. He did have that weird kind of dick mouth, dick, dick tongue thing at the end, which was a little disturbing. But there it uh, is. hey, but had to say it. So might as well before all the people on like yeah, dick tongue blah, <laughs> said it first, ha ha, whatever. Um, anyway, I thought the, the Venom, Venom trailer was cool. Let's start with you, Perry. What do you think about Venom? Is it going to be a horror movie? It's rated I'm R. I'm borrow that, and I'm going to do the I said it first thing yeah. at some point. Um, I really liked everything. I feel like I've been in the minority on it too. Whether it's that first teaser trailer or the second trailer that came after it, I've really been on board with everything I've seen of this because, I mean, yeah, it's got a, a very different feel from some, I, and again, you, you know I don't know the source material, so I can't judge it from that perspective right. where, oh, this isn't the Venom I know and love, so I don't like it. That's, I'm completely detached from that, but as someone who wants to see a darker take on the superhero genre, I'm very satisfied with this. I'm a big fan of Tom Hardy, and more so than anything, what I loved about these two trailers is I felt like I was experiencing most of it from his perspective, right. which is the most interesting part of this character in this situation to me is how he's affected by everything that's happening to him and that's what I got a taste of in the trailer. Right, now if you go and see Upgrade like we're imploring mm -hmm. you to, you get a little flavor of what hmm. could possibly be in Venom because you have a character inside a character. Riley, what do you think about Venom? Uh, the trailers haven't done it for me. I've been very lukewarm and I think it's because I know the source material yeah. and I'm very interested. I don't know how they're doing a Venom movie without Spidey. Right. I just, I'm, I I know a lot of people are saying that. Maybe they do have a plan. Maybe you're right, Schnepp, we're gonna see a connection to Peter Parker somehow. But I've really enjoyed the character of Eddie Brock and his journey that then led to Agent Venom uh, later on. I like the idea of like a soldier that is debilitated and then he uses the symbiote. That's fascinating to me. I've always enjoyed the symbiote storyline that it came from space. This looks like it's a little bit of a tired cliche for me. Mm. Sorry, government created this. Here's, we're gonna do uh, the Winter Soldier program and test it on all these people. And then one of them is gonna break out and that's our guy. I've seen those movies before. I want something different. If they're gonna give me more horror, I'm all for it. Um, I, and just made me make me care for Eddie Brock. I hope he is a kind of anti-hero, and we get a little darkness. We get a little grit. It's hard to it's hard to tell. I've seen this movie before, at least from the trailers for me. 
What do you think, Clark? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'll wait for the reviews. I, I, I don't think it looks bad, and I'm, I'm not not excited for it. I just, um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, like, lukewarm on it, but as yeah. of now, yeah, I mean, I'll go see it. Sure, it's Tom Hardy running around. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's not a hard sell. I mean, look, if you're, if you're a Tom Hardy fan, if you like Taboo, I mean, if you like Taboo, then you're going to see anything that Tom Hardy is in. I thought Tom, the Tom Hardy and Taboo was fantastic. So I'll still check out Bronson while we're creating lists for you. Hey, guess what? You know what? A remake is happening. It's called Suspiria and Halloween. There's two of them, and they're on their way, coming at us faster before. They're going to be here very soon. Uh, Suspiria, the trailer just dropped a couple days ago. That's opening November 2nd, strangely after Halloween. And guess what? Halloween, the trailer drops this Friday. Some pictures of Michael Myers and his new spooky outfit have been revealed a couple days ago. But let's start, let's start with talking about Suspiria. So now Suspiria to me, I gotta say, that's one of my favorite horror films. It's in my top 10 favorite horror films of all time. I love Dario Argento as a director. I love his uh, his films. But Suspiria to me really hits home in such a special way. Not only the gore, the gruesome cinematography, the beautiful cinematography, the storyline, the way it builds its tension over the time from the very beginning all the way to the very end. I mean, I love that the the, po the poster says it right. If you made it through the first 90 minutes, the last 10 minutes, blah, 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 whatever, that's completely right. The last 10 minutes are terrifying. But uh, anyway, Suspiria, I, when I heard it was getting rebooted, I was really upset. I was like, you know, F this. I don't want to see a reboot of a masterpiece. What are these idiots doing? I didn't know who the writer was, who actually, you know, Clark and I might differ about the terror, but it's the writer of the terror. Oh, and no. I love the terror. <laughs> Clark did not like the terror. We can talk about that later. <laughs> we are going to get into TV a little bit later. But um, so the writer of the terror wrote this new Suspiria and the director, it shocked me this morning because I, I, I didn't put, I was like, I didn't put it together that he did Call Me By Your Name. I did be like, oh, it's the guy who works with Tilda Swinton. He's, he did I Am Love, mm -hmm. he did The Bigger Splash. Both I Am Love, I was okay with. The Bigger Splash, I really liked. He's done some really cool experimental movies, um, pushing boundaries in different ways. I was like, wow, and then when I found out he did, directed Call Me By Your Name, it just put it, elevated it, because to me, before I found out about it, I loved this trailer. It, it I really felt like, you know, oh my God, after seeing it, I was like, this is different enough and feels totally different enough, yet also feels refreshing, new, and also following the storyline of the mothers and things like that. If you're a fan of the trilogy that Argento did, you can see the beginning of a trilogy here if it's done right. The trailer is done perfectly, it's perfect. So for me, loved it. What do you think, Clark? Here for it, I'm here for it. Now I differ from you in that I am not precious about Dario Argento's original. Um, I understand why it's important and I understand why people love it, but to me it never landed. Mm -hmm. um, so that said though, I've always thought the premise for Suspiria was brilliant mm -hmm. and um, and really interesting and cool. And so this trailer, I mean I was already like excited for it, but this trailer, uh, it's such a good trailer. It's atmospheric and tonally very cool. It shows you just enough, or I guess a teaser, or whatever. But um, I'm 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 on board. And Tilda Swinton, <laughs> Tilda Swinton. Yeah, I'm I'm ready. She, I'm very. Excited. She is the one true goddess. What do you think, Riley? <laughs> yeah, that trailer is fantastic. And same same here, Clark. I mean, Suspiria the original is an important film, and I can recognize that for the genre and for what it did for film. Never landed with me. So with this, I was like, okay, this trailer completely sold me. Coupled with some of the footage that I heard about at CinemaCon. Mm -hmm. Like I heard people had to walk out of the, the theater or the, the whole con because they're like, Blur, barf, I saw right. things that like really challenged me. I was gory, so happy every, when I read that. I, I was, was like, like I please yes, let me see that footage. Yes, oh. great, I'm in. And the, the atmosphere, the tease for this, everything is it. And it reminded me, it, it looks like it could have come right after the original. It does it have, really, it has it a, has a that, 70s grainy yeah, tonal. Yeah, it has the grainy. Tonal, yeah. Has, it tonality. looks like it's it's kind of a time capsule in in, in time. It, it looked great, so I'm I'm happy to. And I feel see part it. of that is just the way the the, the decision making in the shots and the composition. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wide shots where you see full bodies, and I yes, know in a lot of that. a lot of current cinema, you have way too many close ups mm -hmm. of people's heads because you know they're like trying to get the shots done TV style. This is actually like looks really thought through yeah. as a film. Yeah. 
I will echo what both of you said in terms of my attachment to Suspiria, and that's why I am beyond excited that someone like Luca Guadagnino and everybody else that's involved in this project could now bring this to a new generation, because like you guys, I appreciate the original, but that idea is so smart. It would be such a shame for maybe some folks who are younger out there and are used to some of the more modern horror movies we're getting right now saying, oh, I don't want to do that because it looks old and doesn't look like the stuff I'm used to. If you actually modernize it and still have that same depth and appreciate, appreciation for the story and material, then everybody could love Suspiria, and that's yeah. what I'm hoping for. But Luca Guadagnino had me sold immediately when I found out he was at the helm of this. And then on top of that, I'm going to put Dakota Johnson in the Logan Marshall Green mm. pile mm. because I think she is so underrated, and I think it has a lot to do with that Fifty Shades franchise. Right. Good on her for making money, getting her name out there, but she is so talented and doesn't get enough credit for it. I, I want to see her shine because, I you know, the, the Shades thing, whatever. So hopefully she, she busts out in this one. I mean, yeah. So let's talk about Halloween. Yeah. We've seen yeah. a couple of pictures. We know John Carpenter's up there busting out the score. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to hear a brand new score from John Carpenter. If that's all we get, I will be happy. If that's <laughs> if everything in like next year when we're like, check it out, that Halloween soundtrack, hell yeah, the new one, you know that's gonna be awesome. I cannot wait for this Friday to happen. I know the thing is under lock and key. I was trying to wrangle it. There's no wrangle, I'm out of the wrangle nation. No one's wrangling for me. But you know what? It's okay. It's 48 hours away. Clark, you haven't seen this movie yet, have no, you? No, no. Somehow no. you get to see no. these movies. No. I always have to ask Clark, I'm like, did you see this movie yet? I would tell you. I would, the I would give you a little sometimes. wink, wink yeah. if I did. And no, I have not. I have talked to people who have seen it. Mm. And oh, yeah? no, nobody who, oh, by yeah? the way, for the, don't read between the lines, nobody at or affiliated with Blumhouse. They, there, there have been a, a screening or right. two. Mm -hmm. And I heard about the screenings and I heard there was like mixed. There was kerfuffle, by yeah. the way. Can I just say, I saw people, a screening never happened, blah, blah, blah. Yes, it did. Right. The Go screening ahead. did happen. <laughs> and it, was, it was a kerfuffle of mixed nuts is what I heard. So there was like a, a mixed nuts uh, reshoots. But guess what? Every single yeah, movie yeah. gets reshoots and, and, and they're planned. And guess what? They should have them because when you put something together, sometimes you're like, man, and everything works perfectly except for the end. And it's okay because you go back, you've put that reserve in there. We've got two weeks. We'll fix X, Y, and Z. We've got standing sets. However they figure it out or what they do, that's how movies should be made. Just like television shows, they sometimes don't get the time to do that. You can't do a reshoot. It's already aired. So with movies, you get that chance. What do you think? Oh, I I mean, as you know me, this is this is my jam. This is this, Halloween is my number one horror movie of all time. So to have John Carpenter kind of sign off on when these guys came in, Danny McBride and, and David Gordon Green pitched their idea, and the master goes, huh, yeah, and then Blumhouse, come on. Mm -hmm. So I cannot wait, I'm like with you, Schnepp, it's like Christmas for me on Friday, because I'm dying to see this trailer, because they also released it at CinemaCon, and people were saying it's like really scary, and that, that excites me, because we haven't had a scary horror, uh, Halloween movie, at least in the franchise, for many, many, many years. I We were talking a little bit about H2O off, off air, you know, it's fine by me, but I've not, I want the return for this. The only thing that is that I'm getting a little worried about is it, it seems like it's a, a basic copy of the original. Like he just escapes again, but it's 40 years later. Mm -hmm. I hope there's something fresh that surprises me with this um, because I know that the team behind it is completely capable. But Jamie Lee Curtis looks phenomenal. I cannot wait to see her in action. Well, hopefully, again. we can organize a Collider Nightmare Let's screening of Halloween yes. a couple days before Halloween comes out so we all watch the original together with a bunch of you weirdos. So maybe we can make that happen. Frosty, that. get on it already and show it in IMAX. Yeah. What do you think, Perry? Um, I want this right now. I want yeah. the trailer right now. I want the actual movie right now. I have all the faith in the world that even though what we've heard so far does sound like a copy paste a little bit. Sure. I feel like with Danny McBride and uh, David uh, Gordon David Green. Gordon Green's sensibilities, there there's something there's something That's there, and also yep. this is a big deal for Blumhouse. You don't have the track record and and the aspirations that a company like Blumhouse does, and then mess up a Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. So. I don't like that face. Yeah. <laughs> I just got so oh, distracted no. by I mean, that face. No, no. Oh, no. No faces. No secret no faces. faces. But but the pressure on Blumhouse here is what's 
keeping me very hopeful that they are going to pull it off well. I think they will. And whatever they did with the reshoots, hopefully that fixed whatever issues there were. I mean, look, there's a lot riding on a Halloween reboot remake, especially with Blumhouse, with all the films that they've been putting out through Blumhouse and Bloom and BH Tilt and everything. They're riding on a high and I want to see this high continue. I'm high on Aquaman. That's right. Aquaman's coming <laughs> yeah. out December 21st. Yes. It's yes. promising, intense action and thrilling swashbuckling suspense. I don't want to use it. I always Arr. joke about Arr, swashbucklers. Arr. Arr, I'm Aquaman. Arr, where are my pirate chips? Arr. Stop using swashbuckling. I just threw it in there to be a jerk. That's why I threw it in there because I don't want to hear them. I don't just want because it's hear. on the water doesn't yeah. make Arr. it swashbuckling. Where are my, where are my buckles? Arr. Um, you know what? It, hopefully it's got some intense horror because deep down in the Marianas Trench, there are creatures that we've never seen before and they're weird and glowing and spiderish and jelly-like <laughs> because of the deep pressure. No one can, no human can be there unless we're encased in some kind of weird submarine. I know James Cameron loves to keep going down there inside some tube, but I guess all the Aquamans and Aqua Women's can like swim around in there. Maybe they're hanging out with some weird creatures or they don't want to hang out with them. Henceforth, some James Wan terror. I know that he was like interested in that trench aspect. If you read in the comics, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Aquaman, Waterman, what do you think? Uh, oh, I'm so here for this one. I mean, I've been saying this on Movie Talk for years at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, Wonder Woman and James Wan's Aquaman were the two that mm -hmm. I was actually excited for. Yep. And um, and that hasn't changed. And you know what? James is ready. He is, I, I know, like, he. yes, he had Furious 7, um, but I think this is going to be his coming out party as not the guy who did Saw, not the, you know, and, and, and not that there's anything wrong with that. Like, I want to be really really clear. There's no shame in being an incredible horror filmmaker. But I think that James is ready to show that he is big time, that he's here to stay, that he's that he's a legit force to be reckoned with as a director. Yeah. I think he's going to crush it. I think Momoa was was the best part, uh, one of the best parts of Justice League as far as I was concerned. So I'm I'm on board. Yeah. How about you, Riley? Oh, I'm on board. It's James Wan. You know, a lot of it, we've had so many A-list directors start in horror, even Steven Spielberg with Jaws. I yeah, mean, I know he totally. did Sugarland Express before or Duel, that. Or Duel, which is awesome. Or Duel, horror, yeah. which is that. But James Wan, you have to have a certain thing in horror to make you scared, whether it's your shot selection, your framing, your casting, all of this atmosphere. It transfers most times if you're a good director in horror. That's why I believe in this movie so much. I can't wait, and I hear there are people riding sharks. So that's, just get, oh, I'm, yeah. in. I'm in. Right. Sharks, mantas, what do you think, Perry? Talk about having faith in someone. I have all the faith in the world in James Wan. I really do believe he's going to crush this. And while, well, yeah, I agree. There's no there's no shame in having your roots in horror. I think that that is something that he was probably initially attracted to, and it helped him grow as a filmmaker, because when he did make Furious 7, I thought he make, made that leap especially well, and I yeah. think the same thing is going to happen with you Aquaman. you got to think about us, Sam Raimi, Peter Jackson. So many people started in the world of exactly. horror and are top tier directors and producers now. Uh, so let's talk about Mortal Engine speaking about Peter Jackson. He's producing this film. Um, it's uh, Is this the next Mad Max or is it the next Jupiter descending, ascending? Because <laughs> I watched and I was like, I like parts of this trailer and then other parts I felt like I was watching like a bizarre, like, you know, Earth 11 Star Trek, uh, you know, like, hello, I'm in the bright universe or whatever. I don't, it was hard to follow. Like, it just looked like a bad TV show. And then other parts of it looked really exciting and cool and weird. That was me. What do you think, Perry, Mortal Engines? If I had to make that that bet between the two you just named, this is definitely going with Jupiter Ascending. Ouch, yeah. This The trailer just didn't present the idea very well, and I've never read the book, so I, I don't really know anything about that. But when I read the logline for the movie and the description of the book, the, I mean, isn't the whole hook the idea that the cities are, are, are on... That are is the hook. Mo they're mobile. Yes. So, like, why not have one of your trailers, like, start on the inside and then come out to a big reveal being like, hold holy crap, look at how the world is today. And instead, I got this weird mishmash of characters that I wasn't really following, and it kind of took away from the cool factor of, right. of the hook of you the whole thing. You killed my dad. Don't tell me, son. Then they both, oh, you die too. And it's like, it's the so way dumb. it was presented, why did he push him, push them off the thing into the little hole right. and then have to go get them again? Like, shouldn't he have just killed yeah. them right then and there? <laughs> Poorly executed, weird script. Who knows, trailer, <laughs> b bizarreness, what do you think? Yeah, it was fine. Yeah, it didn't. I feel again that I've seen this movie, whether it is Jupiter Ascending or Mad Max or the flavor that we're getting all through this. Haven't read the books. 
I'm not familiar with uh, his uh, Peter Jackson's mentee who's doing this, I guess. Or right. and so I, you know, the fact that he wrote it with the Lord of the Rings crew, Fran Walsh, I know, and um, I forget the third name. Was it all three of them? Either way, I'm Tommy I'm, Biscuits. Sure, Tommy Biscuits. You know, it looks fine. It looks fine. Uh, you know, Hugo Weaving, that gets me a little bit. I'm like, oh, it's nice to see him back again, I guess. But I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I was like, Hugo Weaving it, doing the same shit again? Yeah, what it's do you think, same. Claire? Yeah, I'm just sort of mad on it. Like, I wasn't personally offended when I watched the trailer. Like, oh, I'm so mad. But I was also just like... <laughs> <laughs> but was, How dare you show us a trailer? Yeah, Boo. A trailer that I don't like. But, but I also was kind of just like... Okay, that's yeah. the thing I just watched. <laughs> yeah, it's on I the was, internet. I was in the mad mode, but then when I have to talk about it, I got more, more, more pissed than I was when I watched. I was just you like, talk eh. about. It. I know, I know. You, you kind of mentioned it on yeah. movie talk, and I like, kind of agree eh, with you. Yeah. It's like yeah. you know, it's more. Not as good as it could be, it mm -hmm. like you know about move, cities that are on giant. Look, look more like as a game that I would play as a kid, like a remote control thing. Look, London's on this thing, boo, you know whatever. <laughs> let's get into comic books again. How scary are these Joker movies? So you get two Jokers in every deck. What is that? <clears throat> it looks like we're getting two Joker movies. So we got a Joaquin Phoenix Bizarro Killing Joke style Martin Scorsese produced film on one hand, and then on the other hand we got the Oscar winning Jared Leto. I'm a ha ha ha. Joker, part of the DC, uh, FU, DCEU, whatever you want to call their extended universe, extreme universe, film universe, whatever it is. Uh, now he's doing his own standalone movie. Now that got announced. Margot Robbie's doing her own movie, Birds of Prey. That got announced. Well, let's forget about all the other 48 movies that were announced. Let's just only talk about the most recent announcements where you have the the, the directors of, of uh, what was it, uh, Game Game Night. Uh, they're oh, doing yeah. The Flash. The Flash. We have Shazam and Wonder Woman, Aquaman. Those are coming up. Those are all teed up. And we both say, like, well, look, Wonder Woman 84 looks good. Mm -hmm. Aquaman works out about Shazam. Could be fun and exciting. Or we don't know yet. But all these other films, sort of like, what's going to happen? Where's yeah. the Batman? And it, yeah, instead and you, of and a Batman film. You forgot the Man of Steel 2 is happening. Right. Wait a minute. It is it's not. not. It's what not the announced. hell is wrong yeah. with these people that I need 50 Joker movies with Harley Quinn and one version of Joker and then Joker Harley Quinn and then Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey and then another Joker movie and then maybe another Joker movie where Suicide he's a Squad kid. Two, yeah. yeah, it's just in Suicide Squad 2. I don't understand what's going on over there that like Superman is not happening again. I know we got Wonder Woman 2. That clicks one box for me because Wonder Woman 2 was, or Wonder Woman was fantastic but I just don't understand what's going on why do we need to focus on another Joker movie I, I mean when I heard the news it literally pissed me off I would say my, dr <laughs> like, my dream why? panel at Hall H this year would be Henry Cavill saying we're doing Superman with yes. Macquarie we're teaming up yes we're doing that and then at the same time Matt Reeves comes out on stage with Ben Affleck saying we're doing the Batman film we're starting it and it's going to weave into Birds of Prey and the Joker. Perfect. Bat and Ben Affleck's re-upped his, hey, well, I'm going to I'm gonna be the Batman. I know I was, like, I was wiffle waffle about it for the last two years while we're putting these movies out. You know, that's my dream. It'll probably not happen and wake up in a nightmare. What do you think, Clark? I, I don't know why we need six Joker movies. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't get it. I think it's weird. It's a weird choice. Uh, and but you know what? Uh, we make the joke all the time. Movies in the DCEU get announced like every week. Yeah. And how many have we actually seen? Exactly. So, so who knows? But I, I know. I and think then this Shazam is... snuck in there and yeah, it was like, right? huh? so I was like, Shazam! Like, what happened? It's already shot. Yeah, yeah it's like, exactly. literally. What about the other 47 movies? No, we decided to not do the bad dream. What do you think, Barry? Bringing back the whole idea of having faith. I have zero in the slate of DC Warner Brothers movies. We've been covering this long enough that I know you're not gonna fool me again. And what this latest Joker announcement says to me is, let's put that out there. Let's let's test the waters because really, I mean really what any studio has to do is you have to have a whole ton of things in development to see what story you crack first, what project comes together first. So we're just in the internet age where every little bit of information is going to leak and we're constantly hearing about everything and then it looks like a failure when something falls apart but this is the nature of what has to be has to be done especially when you're in that kind of situation that this franchise is in where they still have no real foundation to work with so I, re I really just think it's a race to the green light right now. And then yeah. with the Joker movies, whatever hits that green light first is what we're going to get, get, and the other one's going to go away. Mm. Well, I can't disagree with you, but what I can say is minor mutations is happening. What oh. is it this week? Oh, it's another. 
Bye. What's in the box? Yeah, what's in the box? The horror edition. <laughs> Hey, we've got lots of horror this year so far with the terror, the rain, dark. All these shows have been showing up on streaming, Hulu, whatnot. There's so many that you can't really even keep up with right now. Which ones have you seen? What are you looking forward to? We've got Castle Rock coming out on Hulu, which is like, that's like one giant super love letter to Stephen King. Uh, we've got The Haunting of Hill House from Mike Flanagan. Oh, yeah. That's got Timothy Houghton, uh, Carla, uh, Carla Gugino, uh, Am I saying your name wrong? Gugino. Gugino. Gugino, sorry. Henry Thomas, that's on Netflix. Uh, you got Walking Dead, and it's you know, shuffling into its ninth season. Mm. Everybody's quitting. I don't know if it's going to make it to <laughs> yep. the 10th. Um, <laughs> so what do you guys think? All these TV shows online, I mean, right now, streaming, which ones hit you first? Uh, I did watch all of The Rain, and I love The Rain. I think it's a great concept, and I think those performances are incredible. Other ones, I, I watched, uh, I binged all of Barry. Barry's fantastic. Barry That's another really one that funny. I have on my mind right now. And I just want to make sure I say it if we don't get to it later. Sure. Channel freaking zero. If I you love it. If yeah. you are a genre fan and you have not watched Channel Zero, stop what you're doing right now and don't just watch one season. Watch all three of them because I've, I finished Butcher's Block pretty recently and yet again, they stick the landing. They nail it. It's so atmospheric. It's so creative. And the fact that Evan Katz of all people is directing season four <sighs> I, I have not seen now. i have not I seen season now. three yet but i thought season two was so Ooh. incredible i'm like kind of it's like candy right now to me i was like i've got channel zero that's just waiting it's like uh, dessert I know. I know it's there so it's that, funny it's funny you make that comparison with butcher's block of all things all right well soon to be revealed i don't know what parents talk about what do you think mark <laughs> uh i'm looking at castle rock that's the one i'm on a stephen king kick for the past year ever since Nightmares, we were covering it, and then I started reading it again, and then I read Doctor Sleep, and that movie's coming out mm -hmm. soon, and then, you know, Castle Rock is this weird thing that I don't know what's going on right now, so I'm looking at that, um, and I'm now going back and watching uh, a lot of Black Mirror, and I'm just, oh, oh boy, mm. that stuff is amazing, I'm like, why did this take me so long? I'm jealous because you get to watch those me? all fresh and new. I've seen, yeah. I've seen them like three times each. We just watched the Star Trek. Uh, so one. good. Oh my God, that was awesome. So Black yeah. Mirror, what do you think, Clark? Um, well, in addition to everything you guys have said, I'll say Haunting of Hill House. I'm yeah, yeah. very, very curious and very <clears throat> excited for that. Um, and uh, and hopefully too, you know, Flanag Mike Flanagan in long form, meaning having, uh, you know, being able to tell a story over several hours as opposed to just 90 minutes, we'll get to see see some really, really cool stuff from him. And and our buddy Guillermo del Toro's anthology mm -hmm. that hopefully we'll get by the end of the year. I would love that. I want to say, what, I don't know what it's called yet, but I'm going to see that, whatever it's called. Yeah. Guillermo del Toro's Something with it. Nightmares or 12 Midnight or something Midnight. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, it's Midnight something. Oh. All right, anyway. so we've, got, remember. we've got horror movies that have been just straight to Netflix, like The Ritual, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was fantastic. Veronica, which is also mm -hmm. freakishly scary. Yeah. I mean, it's like, so we've got a lot of these things just popping up. You never know what's going to show up, like unless you're like, you know, what reading all the, what's streaming in five years or whatever. It's just some of these just show up. You've got Stranger Things season three. We've got Legion season three, uh, season four of Black Mirror and Channel Zero. What are you looking forward to most, Clark? Ooh, um, well, I, I really love the premise that we've heard about Stranger Things season three. Um, I don't know if we're going to get it by the end of the year, but maybe we will. Who knows? Um, but uh, I love that premise, and um, I, I quite enjoyed the ritual. And um, I need to finish uh, Dark, the 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 German German sure. oh, German yeah. film or uh, is, yeah. series. Um, uh, that's one where you, you have to read. I have to read subtitles, so I have to really pay attention, which is fine. I like that. I like subtitles, but um, but I also have to really pay attention. It's the only way to watch Dark. I, I know they have the English version. I'm sorry if you were part of the English translation team because you failed. It's not watchable <laughs> in with the have with some the, notes. Yeah, the, it just doesn't work. You have to you have to actually listen to the German to get the actual acting. So you have to read the subtitles, but it actually draws you in. I found I love that series. What do you, how about, how about you, Ryan? Stranger th Things mm -hmm. season three. I mean, I'm a junkie now. I can't wait for that, but it's, I'm on the Black Mirror kick right now. I can't, now I'm like binging everything. So you're telling me there's a season four. I'm like, well, yep, I'll be ready by then. Definitely. Perry? 10 after midnight. 
Yeah. That's the That's Guillermo it. del Toro project. Right. Um, <clears throat> clearly, I'm banging the Channel Zero drum. I just yeah. want that fourth season really badly. But Stranger Things is up there for me. I wish I could say Ash vs. Evil Dead season four was up there for me, right. especially with uh, how season yeah. three wrapped up. But yeah, Black Mirror. <laughs> Black Mirror really just hits home for me in terms of my horror sensibilities and how fascinated I am with modern technology. And I think they've they've really pretty much crushed almost every. Se- it's like Black Mirror. I love some episodes more than another uh, more than others but it never dips below a certain quality level. Mm-hmm, definitely. Well, let's get into the horror comic book pull list. Um, this is the horror edition, so uh, people on the scream or make stabby sounds, please do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a Roka scream in the background. We've seen an amazing new wave of horror, horror comics hitting the stands. I want to list off a couple of them. Kill or Be Killed, um, by Azarello, I mean, sorry, by Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Moonshine by uh, Azarello and Riso. Jeff Lemire's Gideon Falls. Mike Mignola's Hellboy Universe. Uh, the classics. We have Preacher. We have Swamp Thing. We have Sandman. And of course, you could always go back and reread some of the ones they're republishing now, like Marvel's Werewolf by Night or Tomb of Dracula. Some of the classic tales from the Crypt EC comics. What comics have you guys been checking out or or, or taking a look at? You know, any pop off to you? Let's start with you, Perry. Um, I finally finished the first volume of Paper Girls, which you recommended oh, to me yes. forever ago. Yeah. But uh, in terms of uh, genre, genre heavy material, I think the one that made the biggest impression on me recently was probably Outcast. Oh, right also on. because I loved how well that the the stuff in the comic was then transferred to what Adam Winger did, especially in uh, season in season one. one. Season one was season one was like exceptional. Sh- season one was shockingly good to me. But that's some dark dark stuff because we see a lot of you know we see a lot of exorcism scenarios in the horror genre especially in the film universe and there was something about the way that that was presented and how it's tied to just like the personal and familial aspects of the story that made it even darker and more sinister than i think i had anticipated when i first jumped into it how about you Riley? i i'm behind on all comic books so i need a vacation and i'm gonna go get recommendations for you for all this horror stuff sure. but i mean my one of my favorite horror lines in comics was the friday the 13th series they did many years ago where you kind of learned that it's crystal lake was basically an indian burial ground and i'm like ah it's kind of nice so listen, it was, a little poltergeist yeah a little poltergeist <laughs> sprinkle it in yeah. with some friday the 13th flair yeah it, that was fun but i i need to go down my list because i haven't been to a comic book store since Oh, a couple weeks ago with Dorian, but uh, mm-hmm. but for producing reasons, sure. yeah, I need to get some uh, action going. How about you, Clark? Um, next on my list is uh, is is the Penny Dreadful comic. Mm-hmm. I know it's not new, but I am still missing my dearly departed Penny Dreadful, and um, and so I feel like I, and actually I was just recently and I can't remember who I was talking to, but I was talking to somebody who was telling me that um, the comic actually does go to like go to Egypt and explore the mummy a little bit and do the thing things that I thought that the show was setting up in the first place, right. which is what I always wanted from a comic book incarnation. So that's next on my on my list. Well, awesome. I also wanted to give some recommendations. Plastic, you have Grim Tales of Terror, you have Baby Teeth, Clean Room, Ice Cream Man, Regression, Spawn, and Infidel. So give you a big list and also definitely check out Killer Be Killed and Moonshine. Those are trades that are available right now. Easy to catch up and pick up. Uh, don't forget to listen to us on our podcast one and iTunes. You can check out Collider Heroes and all the other Collider shows. You can subscribe and listen to us in your car, but you can't, you can't get to see our pretty faces. So you might want to wait and have dinner and watch us talk about stuff. Um, I'll be at Wizard World uh, this weekend, Columbus, Ohio, June 8th to the 10th. That's right. There's a little sweaty drawing right there. If you use type in the word schnapp, up and you get 20% off your tickets. That's right. Some flavor right there. If you live in Ohio, come hang out with me this weekend because I don't know what else to do in Ohio. I'll be at a weird booth. Booth 220. Come hang out. Guess what? All of us Collider weirdos are going to be in Las Vegas losing lots of money and sweating it out at the amazing Comic Con in Las Vegas, uh, June 29th to July 1st with lots of the Collider crew. We're going to try to get everybody there to come out with us at least one night, play craps with your money, and we'll win and we'll split it 50-50. Just kidding. I'll take all of your money but it's going to be a lot of fun we're going to have panels there. we're going to have heroes we're going to have movie talk we're going to have a lot of things we're going to have booths we're going to have banners we're going to have meet and greets so if you live in the area close to us or not even just fly in from peru i don't care get to las vegas i know there's a lot of weirdos who are like i flew in from i want people from other countries flying into las vegas to hang out with mark riley 
Perry, myself. We're going to try to get Clark up there. Come on, we're going to do it. Let's make it happen. It's Las Vegas Comic Con. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Roke will be there crying in a corner somewhere. Um, so get your tickets. It's a, that's right. It's a, it's a giant collider takeover. We got a roulette table. Things are happening. So I want to thank everybody here for being on our very special Nightmares edition of Heroes. Perry, Mark Riley, Phantom Zone, Clark Wolf. Yay! Um, it was a lot of fun. We did it, guys. Yep, we actually did it. I can't believe it. We did it. But uh, thanks so much for writing in some uh, Twitter questions. I'm going to have to save them for the end, but maybe we'll do one, and it's going to be bloody question of the week. That's right. We're saving one. Here it is. Stephen Grant, you get the only Twitter question. Does it surprise you that we have not had a new Critters film? It's oh. the easiest to explain is they're aliens. Plus, imagine how you can incorporate social media into the film and marketing. Bring back creature features. What do you guys think about having a Critters 9 or whatever? I don't know how many <laughs> they ever went to, but. Critters, that's a blast from the past for right? me. Mm. Yeah. I'd Hey, if we can if we can do it, I say why not? I'm I'm all for creature features. I miss that kind of particular point of the genre, but I would go more towards a Gremlins movie. There That's what I, I I think you could do more well with than a Critters All movie. All right, Perry, Critters versus Gremlins. What gremlins, do you think? Gremlins, but it might be because this one talks like Gizmo like half the day. Gizmo, right? cocker. <laughs> what do you think, Clark? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm I the reason you haven't seen another Crim Critters movie is because. They're critters, they're right. <laughs> and not gremlins. Movie. Was it the second one when they all became the giant critter? I think that was the and third then, one. Yeah, and then it rolled over a guy and just ate him. But I, I am on board so with great. more creature features. Like uh, yeah. yes to more creature features. I always. can't wait to see Ghoulies versus Gremlins versus Critters. That's a triple feature. Not even this all one movie. It's been them all fighting each other, and then Ash shows up at the end. You've been watching the special edition, episode two fifty one of Heroes. It's the Nightmares edition. Thanks for being here. See you next week. What's up, sweaties? It's John Schnapp here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Heroes. You want to watch more episodes of Collider Heroes? You can click on any of these right here for more awesome shows from Collider. You can see comic book shopping. You can subscribe. Share this video. Share our videos. Tell your friends about it. Thanks for watching.